is Ronit Mukherjee and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In today's quick tip video, I'm going to show you the two options within the global bonded contact called compatible and incompatible mesh. Here I have a simple multi-body part consisting of a block and a cylinder, kind of a hammer. Let's say I'm interested in the handle at this point and not so much in the block. So I'm going to apply a finer mesh control on the handle. Since we're not concerned with the block, we can use a very coarse mesh setting for this part. The user will notice, since it is two parts, an automatic global contact folder has been placed. Let's edit this global contact, bonded contact. All the way at the bottom, you'll notice the option for compatible and incompatible mesh. For the first study, we'll just select the compatible and create our mesh. <clears throat> Once the mesh is complete, you'll notice that these parts are meshed in a way that a smooth transition is achieved. The modes from one body are imprinted to the other one as best as they can with the bonded contact. Uh, with the bonded contact, these nodes are merged to ensure proper bonding. As you'll notice, the smaller element uh, go, go around the circumference of the cylindrical part. Let's change that compatibility option and uh, uh, select it to incompatible and see what that does. Once the mesh is done running, you'll notice that these two meshes from different bodies are independent of each other and there's no smooth transition being achieved. This might affect the results a little bit, but sometimes when meshing fails, SOLIDWORKS automatically uh, runs your mesh with an incompatible option just to pass the mesh. Uh, again, in order to get to incompatible and incompa uh, incompatible meshing, you have to right click on your global bonded contact and all the way at the bottom, you'll see the two options. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for watching.